Happy New Year from all of us at Anatomy of a Leader. You've probably vowed to never drink again, have started a diet immediately, and a gym membership may be on the horizon. Or maybe you're wrapped up in a warm blanket, not ready for the world, dreading about returning to work and facing your toxic boss. Before you make any rash decisions, here is a clip from one of the most downloaded episodes of 2023 with Kate Waterfall Hill. She's a leadership coach and a TikTok sensation with her alter ego, Linda, the toxic boss. In this episode, I ask her how to spot a toxic boss, how to have a difficult conversation with your boss and how to figure out your values. If you are struggling with a toxic boss, leave a comment down below or a review on Apple Podcasts and I'll make sure to respond to everyone. And without further ado, here is Kate Waterfall Hill. How do you spot the toxic boss? Like what are they specifically doing mm -hmm. to make themselves and the culture toxic? Well, I suppose it's just that thing that they, they, they're not giving you any time. They're not showing you the, the vision. They're not giving you the purpose. Mm -hmm. um, and they're, you know, inconsistent with how they're over criticizing in public, you know, humiliating other people, and, you know, not apologizing for when things go wrong, just stealing other people's ideas. I mean, there's a litany of, I mean, that's why I've mm -hmm. been able to do nearly 300 videos because there's literally <laughs> just so much material. Little people say to me, how do you, how do you, have you done so many videos? I'm like, I literally, I'm falling over myself to, you know, I've got, I mean, Never lists is. and lists. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm always walking along, mm -hmm. you know, writing oh, another idea and another idea. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I mean, saying saying you know what make what makes a bad leader is like saying what makes a bad person. It's just mm -hmm. there's too many. It's <laughs> just countless. Unfortunately, things. yeah. So as a as an employee working with a toxic boss, like what can you do? Like what advice can you give yeah. to that individual? How to deal with it? Well, it sort of depends on your relationship with that person. So you know, first first step if you could would be to ask for some time with them if you can get time with them and actually have an open and honest conversation that's without judgment and I think that's quite an important part of it that without judgment piece because if you go into a meeting with your boss and say look I want to speak to you because I don't like the way you manage me you know it's not going to be a great conversation it's going to be you know already it's got off to a bad start but if you can say I'd, I'd love to have a conversation with you about how we work together because I just don't feel we're getting the best out of each other and make it a sort of mutual conversation. And this actually can be the leader saying it to the team member or the, or the other way around. It doesn't matter who starts the conversation if there's a disconnect. Um, you know, can we reset and work out a way of working together? What's well, a really nice way of doing it? And it's, you know, sometimes it feels like as a team member, you shouldn't have to take responsibility for this. But if you've got a lead, you know, manager who's just not doing it, then you might need to take responsibility to suggest either a team, if there's a, if there's a general team feeling that the, that the leader's not, not, you know, being a very good leader, um, is to get together as a group and say, okay, let, let's share what we like, you know, how we like to be communicated with, how we like feedback to be given, um, you know, the times of day that we're at our best, um, what sort of information we like to get in a brief, how often we like to be checked in on, and have a sort of uh, a, a checklist of the way you like to work with each other. And some people will say, oh, I love communicating by email. Other people will say face to face. Some people will say on Slack or, you know, monday.com or whatever the, you know, the format is in that particular office. And actually just having a sort of an understanding of how you want to work with each other is useful. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's all, it's all about having an open conversation that's not accusatory, that's not going to mm. start a war. It's a terrifying conversation to have with your boss. I mean, of yeah. all the people to have that conversation with, a difficult conversation, that's probably the top most stressful things yeah. a person goes through in their job. Mm. And having the right language to use, and as you said, that checklist to go through, it's almost like you have to, first of all, work out what you want, Yes, have the right questions to, to hand, yeah. And then kind of like go in there being super prepared. Yeah. And it might be that it's too hard to do that just on your own, just to one to one. It might be that you have a colleague who also feels the same and you go together, but you don't want to gang up on the other manager. Or you might have to go to HR and sort of say there's a tension with me and my line manager. Can I report to somebody different? Or it might be another leader on the same level or maybe higher than your manager and going to them and saying, can, is there anything that can be done about this? Because I don't feel comfortable. So, you know, it, you know, I think bad management needs to be called out. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's okay just to put up with it. But ultimately, if you, you know, sometimes leaders are protected by their leaders or, or they're, the, they're the owner themselves and you can't do anything about it. In which case, I sort of say to people, be really sure of your next move because 
um, you know, if you, if you know yourself well enough, if you've done work on your values, which is one of my really key things that I do in my coaching is to really help people understand their, their core beliefs, their principles, they're like really firmly held, you know, this is really important to me. If you can do some work on that, either with a coach or, or um, on your own, with some really sort of heartfelt self-reflection, if you can define who you are as a person, then you your boundaries are really clear. And you can also realize why you're maybe in, not in alignment with somebody else. So if, for instance, one of your values is um, honesty and integrity, this is a really easy demonstration of the, of the, the concept of values. But if, you're, if you're, one of your values is honesty and integrity, it's really important to you. I mean, most people, hopefully good people, feel like that, but a lot of people have really, really important to them. And the person they work with or their manager or their organization actually is a little bit fast and loose with the truth, maybe a little white lies here and there, or maybe even deliberate, you know, oh, fiddle your expenses. Say you work 60 hours on that project when actually you only did 30, those sorts of things. When you're an out of alignment with your organization or your person you work with, that's well, that's where you get that tension. Mm -hmm. And and if you just feel uncomfortable with somebody, you can't work out why, and you, therefore you don't know what to do about it. If you do some work on your values, think about how they demonstrate their values and that can unlock something sometimes mm -hmm. to sort of go, oh, I see now. So I had a client the other day who was doing work on her values and she was describing to me how her boss gives her work and how it really, really makes her feel uncomfortable. And we were digging a bit deeper into that and it basically she said, I need to know why she needs it. She just gives me this stuff to do and I feel like I've already done it and it's just more work for no reason. So I want to know why and I don't know who it's for and I just don't get the, you know, get, so I want to know who and she doesn't give me a deadline. I want to know when. So I just want to know why, who, and when. Those are the three things. And when she it described it to me, it's sort of almost like, oh, well, yeah. Now, now I've defined what it is I need from her. She said, oh, I remember now. One of my core values when I was doing that work with you was clarity, wasn't it? And I'm now realizing now why I don't get on with my boss is she never gives me any clarity. Mm. Her core value was clarity. This woman's value obviously wasn't. She didn't give the brief well enough. But because she'd been able to sort of put words to these feelings and these emotions and this tension, she could go to her line manager and say, I've done some work on my values with my coach. One of them is clarity. What I'd love from you and what would make me really happy and would me work well and more efficiently and more productively, which is what a line manager always wants mm -hmm. to hear, is if you could give me a really clear brief because I love clarity. So if you could give me the who, why, I did it in the wrong order, why, <laughs> who and when, yeah. that would be great. Mm -hmm. And it, was a, it wasn't... Um, your rubbish at being my manager and you're really bad at giving a brief. It was, this is what I need to make me better. And then it was an easier conversation. So it's, it's having those, those, that sort of way of framing things and the way of wording things that really unlocks relationships with people. I mm. think. Talking about values, do you have a framework that you like to use or a book someone can read or refer to to work out values for themselves? Um, I have a uh, Find Your Purpose module, which is part of my coaching program. So if, you, if I have a, a, a client who's doing my six month program, they get it as part of that. And um, yeah, it's quite comprehensive. I think it's a 37 page workbook um, and it's a lot of self-reflection. So, uh, you know, the first main chunk of it is um, you know, working out when you were at your best, you know, can you recall, you know, how, when you felt that you were really in flow, that you were really positive and feeling um, productive? Um, can you get some feedback? Can you re look at feedback that you've had in the past? It could be when you were a student even or, you know, earlier on in your career or yesterday from, cu from customers, from peers, from line managers, your appraisals, whatever. Gather the evidence ask your friends, ask trusted colleagues now, I'm doing some work on my values. It'd be really helpful if you could give me five words that you'd use to describe me. Simple as. People, you know, if, they, if they're good friends, will will give you, I mean, I, friends of mine gave me like 35 words. Great. Uh, and yeah, and then and then it's a case of theming those and working out what, you know, what the, what the main groups are and deciding maybe five, six values. And it might be that they sort of there are core, there are other ones sort of subsets of the same thing, but you usually can get to about five or six. And then it's a case of looking at those and thinking, do I actually live my life in alignment with those values? Am I am I showing up? So picking that honesty and integrity one out again. If if that's one of your core values, actually, do I do that? Mm. You know, am I? And if you're not, then maybe it, let's look at your behaviour and change the behaviour so you are in line with your values or actually maybe that value isn't one of your values. You know, you think it is, you'd like it to be, 
I'd like one of my values to be generosity. I'm just not. I'm just not. <laughs> I, know, I know, you know, if somebody comes around with a bucket to ask me for cash for something, I'm like, I'm a bit, oh my God, I've only got five pounds. I don't really want to give them five pounds. You know, I'm like that as a person. I know I am. I try harder. You know, I try to get the 20 pounds out. It's very honest of you. <laughs> <laughs> it's the way I've been brought up, I think. You know, my parents were of that generation that money was tight, you know, and, mm. uh, you know, everything was a struggle. So I sort of uh, have, have sort of stayed with that. Mm. Um, I do, as I say, I do try to be better, but it's not one of my core values. I'd like it to be. So, um, yeah, the, the, your core values should be what you do, even when nobody's looking. You've been listening to Anatomy of a Leader podcast. I'm your host, Maria Vorostovsky. If you haven't already, please follow and subscribe this podcast and I'll see you in the next episode.